One of the great things about covering technology news is that occasionally you get days when there's a piece of news that just comes from far left and you weren't expecting it, and today is one of those days. Hello there, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Of course, I'm talking about the new announced deal between Samsung and AMD for AMD to provide graphic technology for Samsung's smartphones. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So let's start with a bit of background. At the moment, Samsung has its own range of processors that you find in smartphones, for example, in the S10 and the S10 Plus, which is called the Exynos range. It has an ARM-based uh, CPU and it has an ARM-based GPU. Now, traditionally, it's been using a combination of its own uh, designs for the CPU, the Mongoose range, and then some designs from ARM. And for the GPU, it's exclusively been using uh, devices from ARM. Now, in fact, that deal was signed back in 2015 as a multi-year deal. However, there have been lots of rumors that Samsung were trying to develop their own GPU. Now, I always was suspicious about that because designing a GPU from scratch and making it effective and competitive and efficient is actually really hard. And if you look at the CPU range, the Mongoose, we're now on the fourth generation, the Mongoose 4, and still Samsung aren't up there with the Cortex A77. So I was always a bit dubious, and I honestly thought that in the end, Samsung would stay with ARM and sign another deal, continuing their development of the uh, Mali GPU. However, I was completely wrong, because today what I announced was that AMD were gonna be providing technology for Samsung to put in its mobile devices, including smartphones. So let me just pick out a few key phrases here from the press release that we need to pay attention to. Okay, so first of all, we noted it's a multi-year deal. That means it isn't just for one chip. Again, this is probably gonna be a four or a five year deal. And it does specifically talk about ultra low power. And ultra low power is what you get in smartphones, what you get in tablets and could possibly also include what you get in some forms of a laptop, maybe Chromebooks, maybe Windows on ARM. That is a bit uh, gray at the moment. But the key thing here is that they are licensing the intellectual property. So what that means is that AMD aren't gonna make a chip and then ship it over to uh, Samsung. They're gonna give them designs for the in internal designs for a GPU, which Samsung then take and incorporate that in their Exynos uh, uh, processors, just like they do at the moment with the Mali uh, IP. They take that design and it gets put in the middle of a chip with all of the CPU and the memory and the buses and the caches and the interconnects and all the things that go in there, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and then that's how they, they make the chip. Now this is a bit of a, uh, a difference to how uh, AMD have traditionally done things because they've really been building their own CPUs and their own graphics cards and they kind of, you know, sell the chip to whoever and then they make a whole graphics card out of it. This is now not a physical thing, this is a design that they're, being, that they're giving over to uh, Samsung. And in terms of money, it says very clearly that AMD will receive money from Samsung uh, for license fees and for royalties. And that means that whenever a device is sold, uh, AMD get a bit of money. But here's the interesting thing it's talking about. It will be based on the highly scalable RDNA graphics architecture. Now, the RDNA graphics architecture has just been announced by uh, AMD at Computex. We don't really know too much about it, but there are a few key things we do know. They underline the fact that it is a highly scalable architecture. And that means uh, two things. One means it can go scale up to the high end where you might need, let's say, 4,096 shader cores or, or maybe even more in the future. But the idea here is that it also scales down. Now the RDNA architecture uses compute units which are based on 64 shaders. So I won't go into the whole thing about shaders. Now, if you want to understand a bit more about that, I would suggest you look at my Power VR uh, video, which talks about how Imagination talk about their shaders and how the numbering of their model numbers based on the number of shaders. But here it says 64 shaders per compute unit. Now, I had a quick look on AMD's uh, website, and they do have today some products that aim at 10 watts. So that's kind of laptop low-end laptop kind of numbers, and those have 640 shaders. Now, a typical 
a smartphone GPU might have half of that, 320 shaders. So the idea seems to be is that using this RDNA technology, they can scale down the number of shaders down to 320, maybe even to lower if uh, Samsung want to make this available in mid-range um, uh, Exynos devices. And that in doing so, they're going to also reduce the power usage. Now, of course, to put that into comparison, in a desktop, you could be looking at 300 watts uh, used by a GPU. And I say as you go down through the different levels down to a, uh, a laptop, 15 watts, 10 watts. And now, of course, with a smartphone, really, you need to be talking about two and a half watts. So that really is quite a drop down. So hopefully the idea is, is that uh, AMD are able to provide that scalable RDNA architecture and bring down the number of shaders. And obviously we're assuming that it's gonna be thermally efficient so that it can provide the performance inside of a battery operated handheld device. Now the real kicker in all of this is that when I looked up the current agreement that Samsung has with ARM, it was released, the announcement was made on the 3rd of June, 2015. And when I look down at my calendar, of course today is the 3rd of June, 2019. So exactly four years to the day, Samsung have announced a new partnership with uh, AMD. So that basically means that ARM and Samsung had a five year deal. Probably in that deal there somewhere, there was clauses about renewing the deal or allowing Samsung to announce future partners. And the four year date was probably the cutoff for that. And that's what Samsung have done. They've announced now a new partner. So if things go uh, according to Samsung's plan, we're gonna see uh, you know, the, the next Exynos uh, processor, let's say the 9830, is probably still gonna have the, the Mali in it, the Mali G77 most likely. So that's gonna be in the S11 and the Note 11 in 2020. And then in 2021, the next Exynos chip, so let's call it the 9840, will not have an ARM Mali GPU in it. It will have a, a AMD RDNA based uh, GPU in it. Now, I also probably think there's probably space there for a year's worth of slippage maybe uh you know samsung would still go with arm for another year maybe they could you know maybe there's gonna be a battle here about implementation if amd don't actually deliver on these promises then maybe samsung might have to go back to arm uh, and sign another deal i don't know we're gonna to have to see what it is but if there's not that slippage then as i said 2020 for mali g77 and then 2021 for whatever that's going to be called from amd and probably by then on five nanometers so exciting times in terms of gpus and of course all of you uh, gamers there are all saying wow hopefully they'll then be able to compete with qualcomm and of course this brings up the old story that of course originally qualcomm bought its uh, gpu technology from amd 10 years ago or so and that's why adreno and radeon are just an anagram one of the other but of course lots have changed in the last 10 years now amd are now coming back into that market and it also raises the interesting question whether there was ever an agreement between Qualcomm and AMD about when AMD were allowed to enter into again into the mobile market to not become a direct competitor with the business unit it just sold over to Qualcomm we don't know these things but it's interesting that 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 10 years has also gone past so maybe that was something to do with all this as well all very interesting okay that's it my name is Gary Sims this is Gary Explained I hope you liked this video if you did please do give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and do hit that bell notification icon okay that's it I'll see you in the next one